Come, baby. Enjoy this great game. Every December at the winter meetings, the Rule 5 draft takes place, which allows teams to snag players from other organizations who were left in the minors too long in order to give them a shot in the big leagues. If a team drafts a player with the Rule 5 draft, that player must remain on the major league roster for the entire season. And if a Rule 5 draftee is released and passes through waivers, they must be offered back to their original team. Because these are players who were left vulnerable to being drafted by another team, more often than not, they aren't exactly big-time prospects. Oftentimes, they don't even make it past spring training. However, there are occasions when a team comes up with a huge steal through the Rule 5 draft process, ending up with a massive superstar. The Rule 5 draft goes back more than 100 years, and in the early 20th century, players like Christy Mathewson and Hack Wilson were taken in an early form of the Rule 5 draft from unaffiliated minor league teams. In today's video, however, we're going to count down the top 10 MLB Rule 5 steals of affiliated minor league history, meaning these Rule 5 picks will all be prospects that were taken by an MLB team from an MLB team. And even if the player didn't work out with the team that drafted him, if he went on to become a huge superstar, he will still be eligible for the list. So let's get into it. Before getting to the main list, I have an honorable mention that I sort of overlooked during my research and preparation for this, and that is Jose Bautista. I completely forgot that he was actually briefly a Rule 5 selection. He started his career with the Pittsburgh Pirates, but in 2003, the Orioles selected Bautista in the Rule 5 draft. He was shortly thereafter claimed off waivers by the Devil Rays. And then he ended up with the Royals. And then he ended up with the Mets before heading back to Pittsburgh all in the same season, making him the first player to appear on five different rosters in the same season. It was later matched by Oliver Drake in 2018 and of course jose bautista went on to be a superstar player with the toronto blue jays making six consecutive all-star games although this wasn't until several years later but jose bautista was indeed a rule five draft pick at one point so let's get now to the main list starting with number 10 joaquim soria coming in first on today's list is a former shutdown closer named Joaquim Soria, who originally signed with the Dodgers, but was released after just four minor league appearances in 2002. He didn't play affiliated ball again until 2006 with the Padres and pitched in just seven games in single A, striking out 11 and 11 with a 2.31 ERA. He wasn't much of a prospect at that time, and with just 11 minor league games in five years, the Padres left him exposed and the Royals snagged him in the Rule 5 draft. Soria stuck with the team through the entire 2007 season and eventually took over the closer role. By 08, he was an all-star, closing out 42 games with a 1.6 ERA. Soria finished his career with 229 saves, 162 of which were with Kansas City. Number 9, Shane Victorino. Next up is a player who was drafted not once but twice as a Rule 5 selection. Shane Victorino was drafted by the Dodgers in the sixth round and spent five years in the minors, capping it off with a solid 2003 season between AA and AAA, hitting 296. He was unprotected and drafted by the Padres. After just 36 games, hitting 151, he was deemed not to be big league material and sent back to the Dodgers. In 2005, after another solid year in the minors, the Phillies took a shot at him in the Rule 5. And this time, he stuck, hitting 294 in 2005 and then becoming a regular by 06. In 2007, Victorino hit 281 and stole 37 bases, being caught just four times. He racked up three gold gloves, two all-star selections, and was a staple in the Phillies lineup for eight years, helping them win five straight NL East titles and a World Series ring in 2008. The Dodgers did get him back through a trade in 2012, but he hit just 245 for them before heading to Boston and helping them win a World Series in 2013 by winning a gold glove and hitting 294 with 15 home runs. Number eight, Paul Blair. Next up is the great Paul Blair, who began his career in the New York Mets organization. 
He had a low batting average in the minors, but showed decent pop and had a great glove. The Baltimore Orioles took him in the minor league portion of the 1962 Rule 5 draft. His bat came alive immediately with Baltimore, and by 1965, he was a regular in the lineup, hitting well and playing elite defense. Blair helped the O's win two World Series, including the 1970 Fall Classic, in which he hit 474. He finished his career with over 1,500 hits, four World Series rings, two All-Star selections, and eight gold gloves. Number seven, Dan Ugla. Although here in San Francisco, we remember Dan Ugla for his 0 for 11 contribution in 2014, long before that, he was a young prospect in the Diamondback system. They let him wither away in the minors for five years, despite him putting up strong numbers, such as a 290 average and 23 home runs in high A, then a 297 average with 21 home runs in double A. As an 11th round pick, apparently the Diamondbacks didn't think much of him, so the Marlins drafted him as a Rule 5 pick, and he went on to make the All-Star team in his first big league season, smashing 27 home runs with a 282 average. He followed that up with five consecutive seasons of at least 30 home runs, making two more All-Star teams and winning a Silver Slugger. The Diamondbacks really dropped the ball on this one. Number six, Bobby Bonilla. One of the biggest sluggers in the game of the 80s and 90s was Bobby Bonilla who was originally drafted and made a name for himself with the Pittsburgh Pirates. This wasn't the team he made his big league debut with, however. First, Bonilla played five years in the minors with some moderate success, but no obvious signs of the superstar he would become. The Pirates left him unprotected and the White Sox stepped in and drafted him. He hit 269 with just two home runs and 234 at-bats in Chicago before the Pirates reacquired him for pitcher Jose De Leon. From there, he went on to make six all-star teams and win three silver sluggers. Bonilla hit 32 home runs in 1990, finishing second in the MVP voting and finishing his career with 287 home runs. Although Bonilla did end up with the team he was drafted by, the White Sox still made a very nice Rule 5 pick by taking him. They just shouldn't have traded him. Number five, Daryl Evans. In 1967, Daryl Evans was drafted in the seventh round by the Philadelphia Phillies. Later, after the team moved to Oakland, Evans was in double-A with the Birmingham A's and hit just 241 with three home runs. The A's didn't think enough of him to protect him on their roster, and he was exposed in the Rule 5 draft. Along came the Atlanta Braves, who snatched him up and found a superstar as Evans went on to smash 43 home runs in 1973 with 104 RBIs. He could also get on base and led the league in walks multiple times, including 1974 when he walked 126 times. Evans also played for the Giants for eight years, having his best year with the Orange and Black in 1983 when he crushed 30 home runs and made the All-Star team. He went on to smash 40 home runs in 1985 with the Tigers and retired back with Atlanta in 1989, finishing his career with 414 bombs. Number four, George Bell. In March of 1978, the Philadelphia Phillies made a great move in signing international free agent George Bell. In his first three seasons in the minors, he hit over 300 every year, including a Big 1979 when he crushed 22 home runs and drove in 102 runs. Regardless of the obvious fact that this was a superstar in the making, the Phillies left him vulnerable in the 1982 Rule 5 draft and the Blue Jays took him. He wasn't quite big league ready then, but they let him stay on the roster throughout 1981, which gave them the right to put him in the minor league system in 82. By 1984, he was ready to contribute and hit 292 with 26 home runs. He only got better from there and in 87 took home the AL MVP after crushing 47 home runs with a 308 batting average. Bell ended his career with over 1,000 RBIs and was one of the greatest Rule 5 steals of all time. Number three, Johan Santana. Signed as an amateur free agent from Venezuela in 1995 by the Houston Astros, Johan Santana put up decent but not incredible numbers in the low minor leagues for a few years. In 1999, he was available in the Rule 5 draft, and the Florida Marlins drafted him. Then the Marlins immediately followed up this wise decision with a terrible one by trading him to the Twins for Jared Camp, who never made the majors. The Twins were smart enough to keep Santana through his first big league season despite a 6.49 ERA. Remember, they had to keep him on the roster all season or offer him back to the Astros. Once that season was over, they had the freedom to send him to AAA to get more seasoning in future seasons. 
and by 2003, he had his breakthrough MLB season, going 12-3 and with a 3.07 ERA. In 2004, he became one of the best pitchers in the game, going 20-6 and with 265 strikeouts, taking home the Cy Young Award. He would go on to win another Cy Young in 2006, winning the pitcher's triple crown by leading the league in ERA, wins, and strikeouts. He made four all-star teams and was on a Hall of Fame path until shoulder injuries shortened his career. Two teams missed out on this stud, the Astros for leaving him exposed and the Marlins for trading him. The Minnesota Twins deserve big credit for sticking with him through his rough rookie season. Number two, Josh Hamilton. In 1999, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays took Josh Hamilton as the first overall pick. He was a gifted athlete with an effortless swing that generated massive power. Unfortunately, poor decisions and drug abuse sent his life spiraling out of control, and he didn't even play baseball for three full seasons. I cannot even blame the Rays organization for leaving him exposed in the Rule 5 draft, given his history at that time. The Cubs ended up taking him, but immediately sold him to the Reds. Hamilton took full advantage of this opportunity that he nearly squandered away. He crushed 19 home runs with a 292 average and a 922 OPS in 90 games, despite playing in only 15 minor league games during the previous four years. The phrase, the natural, never fit anyone better. The Reds surprisingly traded him to the Rangers, where he became a straight-up superstar, crushing 32 home runs with a league-leading 132 RBIs in his first year in Texas. Hamilton's performance at the 2008 Home Run Derby got the attention of every baseball fan in the country. And in 2010, he had a monster MVP season that led the Rangers to the World Series, hitting 359 with an OPS over 1,000 that season. And to add to all these insane numbers, Hamilton hit four home runs in a single game in 2012. Injuries slowed down his progress and Hamilton ended his career with 200 home runs. But I've always believed that had his career never been derailed by drug abuse, Hamilton would have been a Hall of Famer and one of the greatest to ever play the game. Number one, Roberto Clemente. In February of 1954, the great Roberto Clemente signed with the Brooklyn Dodgers as an amateur free agent out of Puerto Rico. He entered into the Dodgers minor league system but did not get a ton of playing time. His stats looked average at best, 257 average with a couple of home runs with the AAA Montreal Royals. Pittsburgh Pirates pitching coach Clyde Sukaforth went to a few minor league games, focusing mostly on Dodgers pitching prospect Joe Black, who the Pirates were considering as a Rule 5 option. Sukaforth noticed Clemente in pregame warmups. He had an incredible arm, amazing hands, and a quick swing, but the Dodgers didn't seem to think much of him. He barely played, and he even had to take batting practice with the pitchers. This could have been intentional in order to sneak Clemente through the draft unnoticed, but whatever the case, Sukaforth had seen enough and convinced the Pirates to take Clemente in the Rule 5 draft, which they did. The rest is history. Clemente became one of the most iconic players in the history of the game, winning the MVP, making 15 All-Star games, winning 12 gold gloves, and reaching 3,000 hits. Despite being one of the greatest of all time, he was an even better human being, spending much of his time involved in charity work. In 1972, he tragically died of a plane crash while delivering aid to earthquake victims of Nicaragua. Clemente was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1973. And that does it for the top Rule 5 steals in the past 100 years going back to when the minor leagues became officially affiliated with the big leagues. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please hit that subscribe button. And there's also a join button down below if you are interested in supporting the channel on a monthly basis, which would allow me to make even more videos like this. Feel free to check out my website as well, humbabybaseball.com. I hope everyone has a great day and let me know about some more great Rule 5 picks in the comment section down below. We will talk to you in the next video.